because you get more efficient! What's up everybody, it's that white boy from the yard, back at it again with another video. And today we are back with something special actually, because we are live with Dr. Tony Huge, because most recently, uh, YouTuber Greg Doucet put out a video online ranting all about Tony, you know, and I, I, I watched the video and I thought it was a lot of misconceptions, so uh, I wanted to give Tony a moment to, you know, just reply on a few things. So, have you seen the video yourself? or? No, I haven't seen Greg's video, um, but I I saw something that you posted somewhere rebutting some of the stuff, or, or I, I should say giving follow-up information so that people have all of the facts. And then you asked if I would uh, do an interview where you could clear up some of the facts, and yes, absolutely, but you'll have to tell me what he said, and I'll have to try to imagine the context and then and then respond to so that people have uh, information to they can learn from. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's say like a week ago, we released a video called Tony Huge, a doctor of nothing, fasting and cardio nonsense. All right, so now I can, now as I can remember, you know, Greg has been ranting on you for quite some while since the 20 pounds in 30 days transformation series, I believe. Now, you know, since we worked together quite a lot, you know, and I had to watch the video until the end, uh, and since I know a little bit more about you than Greg probably ever will, I noticed a lot of wrong accusations. And I just wanted to give you the moment to reply on them, like I said. you know. So I took five misconceptions out of them that raised my eyebrows. And for the rest, you know, it was just yelling and not really important. So, all right, let's just get to it. The first one, he basically bashes you for not being smart because you didn't study besides law school. He says... You're not educated about actual scientific information about supplementation, cardiovascular fitness, and so on. So did you study anything besides law school, official or even unofficial? Because I do believe that you learn a lot of things from doing experiments on yourself and others. And Sure, yeah. So my first passion was actually bodybuilding, biology, chemistry. So that started when I was 12 years old. So I've been studying... Um, the chemistry that's involved in bodybuilding, health and longevity, for much longer than I've studied law. I have way more hours into studying uh, biology and chemistry than I do law. And, and I don't mean the academic sense. I mean actual real-world application, which is I used to read. Um, I used to read medical studies at a very young age, and uh, you know, I, I I had an ability to see through bullshit, basically. And that yeah, yeah, yeah. was a skill that treated that, that was served me very well as a lawyer, but serves me extremely well in health and fitness too, because it's 99% bullshit. So my ability to see through the bullshit and research and understand the actual facts, not the sensationalism on top of it, uh, is how I was able to learn so much so fast. I just didn't start sharing it with the world uh, until I was basically retiring from law. But it was the same thing with law, too. I mean, I studied law a lot. I was really good at it. I had a firm with, uh, I don't remember how many employees now, but at one time, maybe like 24 employees working under me in, in my own law firm. So it was a lot of uh, uh, management and a lot of law and a lot of really complicated cases. So when I say that I'm I was, I'm actually better at the chemistry of the human body than I even was a lawyer. That's saying a lot. And it is because of my, my true passion for it and the amount of hours that I've spent researching it. Now, I don't, at one time I memorized, I memorized everything. Like I memorized all the muscles in the body, not all of them. There's too, there's too many. Uh, I memorized all the bones in the body. I memorized how all the organs work and, and pathways and uh, all the amino acids. And just, I, I could have, I could have written the textbook and all this stuff at age, at age, probably 17, just to give you an idea of how early I started researching all this bodybuilding stuff, but yet I wasn't sharing it with the world at the time. So I, I think that answers the question as far as what my background is, as far as actually studying this stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, if I'm listening to someone else, I would rather listen to someone who is so passionate about it than and someone who put that many hours in academically and then also 
uh, by academically I mean like re reading medical studies or reading anecdotal reports or or reading biology or chemistry and then also who put in the self-experimentation because it's a big difference to read it in a book and get a, a license a certification a degree an actual real world practice so i i actually didn't start even talking about it until i was to the level where i i myself with my very high standards of what information i put in my brain would actually want like really want the type of information that i was able to present yeah yeah, well, I totally get that because I didn't really study anything myself. You know, it's all of inf information online and experiments myself. So I totally get that. All right. So the next one, you had a video of you doing bicep curls uh, with bands in front of a window. I believe it was from Instagram from a couple of days ago or something like that. Uh, he, he was talking about the body fat percentage. He says, you are not 9%. You are 14%. Uh, if you would be 14%, you would be peeled. Uh, that's what he says. You, you think it was the light thing or something like that in the video or how accurate was it? Was it a guess or? Well, I, I get DEXA scans and and I get bod pod and caliper testing. And all three forms, people can say, oh, uh, caliper testing is not accurate. Uh, bod yeah. pod is more accurate. Oh, no, bod pod's not accurate. DEXA scan's accurate. Well, I've had all three confirm what my body fat percentage is. And all three tests are actually within 1.5% of each other at any given time. They don't fluctuate. They don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't differ. And, and it depends who's doing the caliper test. So Coach Marco was the one usually doing my caliper test. And he's able to get it within 1% of what a DEXA scan would say uh, consistently. And we've tested this. Uh, so, you know, I, yeah, yeah. it depends on what standard you're using. If we just look at the raw data, the DEXA scan, the caliper, and the bod pod all confirm, you know, my um, that I'm able to accurately estimate what my body fat percentage is by looking in the mirror. Like I know what I look like at nine percent. I know what I look like at eight percent. So I can kind of call it yeah, by yeah, looking yeah. at it. And and the shocking thing about it is that my body fat percentage is always always lower than I think it is. I'm always shocked by that. And, and Coach Trevor, he would always pinch my body fat, and he would say, mm. he'd say, dude, he'd say, man, you're 7%. And I'd be like, there's no way I'm 7%. Like, I, I go in there, and I see, I see all this fat. Like, this is fat I need to lose for competition. He's like, no, man. He's like, you walk around 7 to 10% body fat all year round. Trust me. You are just uh, three pounds of fat and and water away from being able to look like crazy instagram shredded or getting approaching competition amateur competition level at any given time and we've experimented with this a lot we'll we'll do things to drop the water and and yeah. it will transform me overnight so it it uh i do hold water and i think maybe some people when they look at uh, a picture or a video they're not able to see what's water and and what's what's fat but because i've done all the testing yeah, and everything yeah. I, I have a pretty accurate ability to pinpoint what my body fat percentage is at a given time yeah so it's pretty damn accurate <laughs> okay all right so the next one is and he shows another video of you where you w was holding the code red the fat burner you know uh he was telling you would do fasted high intensity interval training cardio and you slept six hours that night while eating before uh, two Snicker bars and two M&Ms, I believe. Um, he was saying you're not fasted when you slept six hours and you had the two Snicker bars and the two M&Ms. Well, it what about it? Because I do believe define. that you're still fasted because you slept. Yeah. So it depends on the definition of fasted. So some people say you're not really fasted until you've fasted for 48 hours. Like your body hasn't got into this state where it's breaking down protein uh, in order to recycle protein or your blood sugar level is stabilized or you've depleted your liver of glycogen. Like there's so many different ways to say if you're in a fasted state or not. When I say fasted, I mean my body's basically going catabolic. Like if not for the growth hormone response in response to the lower insulin level, my body's catabolic. So that's what I mean by fasted. And, and 
And, and that's relevant because I notice just through my own experimentation that when I do cardio fasted by my definition, which could even mean that I just haven't eaten for, for six, seven, eight hours because my metabolism is very fast, then I'm in that state where I can burn a lot of fat for, for fuel for doing cardio and where the stimulants work really well and where Yohimbine, which requires insulin levels to be low to, to be effective, where Yohimbine is effective. So for me, with a faster metabolism, six hours may be like someone else's eight or nine hours. It really depends on the metabolism. Yeah, definitely. That's what I thought as well. It depends on the performance and answers you're taking at the moment as well, obviously. Okay, then he, he was talking about the same video that you would be having. Uh, he was having a large cup of coffee since it's synergistic. That's what you said. And then he goes completely nuts saying you created this supplement and you're the one who put caffeine in it. You know, but in my opinion, it's just a small amount of caffeine and that's not the only thing that makes the product work, you know, but what's your opinion on the caffeine breakdown? <laughs> so we're referring to Code Red, it sounds like still? Yeah, yeah, in combination with the Code Red, okay. yeah. Okay, so, so Code Red intentionally doesn't have caffeine in it or very minimal caffeine because what the intent behind making Code Red was is to have something that can be taken along with clenbuterol or along with caffeine um, in order to burn fat from many different pathways. So caffeine is not the best fat burner, but it is synergistic with many other fat burners. So if I want to make the ultimate fat burner that doesn't overstimulate, I want to exclude caffeine so that someone can put in as much caffeine as they can, as they feel like they can tolerate. Like for me, for example, yeah, yeah. I, I like to keep my caffeine lower. <clears throat> so I don't want to make a fat burner that's reliant on caffeine. And then I take, I, if I take a lot of it, I'm getting a lot of caffeine, but I'm getting less of the other uh, stimulants and, and fat burners that activate other pathways. So that's why yeah. I made it like that. I actually made it first to stack with uh, clenbuterol in the very beginning. And then I stopped using clenbuterol a long time ago because I realized how dangerous that was. I mean, I always knew how dangerous it was, but then I actually had a friend who had a, basically had a heart attack from it. And uh, so then I decided I wanted to exclude clenbuterol and then, I, and then just use caffeine instead. Not, not that caffeine and, and clenbuterol are interchangeable at all. It's just that those are two stimulants that I want to monitor the dosage very carefully of. Whereas the code red fat burner has, uh, it, there's less possible harmful side effects of going higher in the dosage of those compounds. So I can, I can choose to do either a low dosage of clenbuterol or caffeine with the code red, or I can choose to do a high dosage of the clenbuterol or caffeine with the code red. So it's kind of a unique product like that. It's, it, it can work really well as a standalone for having, for burning more stubborn body fat with less side effects. But the real intent behind designing it was to be able to stack it with other stimulants that are synergistic and very powerful that you want to be able to control the dosage on. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's exactly what I thought. I mean, I would still, if, if I needed to use fat burners, I would still want to have a cup of coffee in the morning, right? I mean, so that's great. <laughs> Okay. So yeah. The next so so is, exactly. Is, Wait. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, That's the point. That's exactly what I do. Just last thing is, I take the code red fat burner to burn the stubborn fat, but I still want to drink coffee. But if the code red fat burner had caffeine in it, then exactly. I couldn't have the coffee because I'd have too much caffeine. So that that's the real world application of it as it is of of, of today and how I use it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's what I thought. Okay, so the next one was you. You were two months. You're two months out from the bodybuilding competition, right? He said, "Why you're two months out? Because it's not even going to happen." I mean, didn't you organize it in a way so it would be happening? Or so we have a license to put on the show from the government, but the government's going to decide whether or not it goes forward or not. And 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 this is Thailand, and it's a it's a basically a dictatorship. It's not like it's a democracy. They, the government at any moment just decides whatever it wants to do. And so you can't really predict it. Even if they say one thing, they could change their mind tomorrow. So as of now, we still have a license to put on the bodybuilding competition, I think June 16th. Um, but as it gets closer, they may say, 
uh, you know, the more likely, the, the, the possible thing, the likely thing is that they will let it go forward, but they're not going to, they're still not going to let gyms be open at that time. So it really, oh, it yeah. really is likely to be a competition where most everybody competing is doing home workouts. And some people have better yeah, home okay. gyms than others. So some home people's homes gym may be as, as good as a, a real gym. And the rest of us are, I mean, I'm using whatever I can get my hands on. Uh, but we but we don't know. We'll yeah. have to see what the government says whether the competition goes goes forward or not. It's all up to the government. All right, so yeah, but you had the papers to do it. That's that's what I meant, you know. Okay, so yeah. the next one was about the whole situation of you explaining doing high intensity training uh, on top of the mountain, you know. Uh, so you would burn more calories while doing so, obviously. But he says you can burn more calories or be superhuman if you sit on your ass all day and then do some cardio a few weeks out while being out of shape. I truly believe that high intensity interval training works and burns more fat, no matter if you're fat or skinny. But what do you think about that? I, I don't know that I completely understand the, the question. The heart of the question is, is what? That whether someone can be superhuman by starting to do, by, by doing very little amount of time of cardio like someone can't become superhuman by doing cardio for a month like because they can't get their cap cardio capacity up high enough is that what we're talking about or just clarify yeah something like that yeah he says that you're not doing cardio year round and then just a couple of weeks pre-contest do the cardio you know and he says that in, in a certain time that high intensity cardio then doesn't work you don't do cardio year round it's healthy and blah blah blah, blah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer it broadly and then specifically then. So I believe that doing cardio year-round would be very healthy to do, and I agree that I should do it, but I don't do everything that I should do. Uh, you know, I, I practice what I preach in a lot of ways, but, you know, there's certain things with regard to health that I would tell everybody to do one thing and I would do it different. Like I would tell everybody don't binge eat M&Ms every night like I do or whatever garbage chocolate you can get your hands on, but I do that myself. So I also sympathize and understand with other people that are in my situation and together, like with the audience, we try to solve these problems together. Or, or like when it comes to cardio, it's, I try to get inspired and then inspire other people to try to do a little bit more cardio. Now cardio is not required to maintain my physique. So I could stay, 8% body fat at 225 pounds to maybe 230 pounds all year with just weights, no cardio. But when I do cardio, I get really shredded, but I also go pretty, I go pretty catabolic pretty fast. The intensity is too high. So the way I get around that is I either do very low intensity cardio uh, so that I'm burning fat, not muscle. Or I do some intervals in there, which causes my body to be in, a, in that emergency state uh, where it releases body fat for fuel, but you don't go, you don't do so intense for so long of an interval to where you're breaking down muscle. So it's just enough to stimulate and shock the body into releasing its body fat. And then the steady state cardio is what I actually use to burn the body fat. And then of course, doing cardio uh, in high intensity interval style or doing heavy leg workouts, both seem to make me leaner the next day, like noticeably, not just water, but my body just turns into a furnace. It just increases my metabolism so much. Upper body workouts just don't do it as much for me. It's really like, it's really the legs, something about activating the legs, activating the lower back or getting my heart rate to spike really, really high. Uh, has an afterburn effect. I mean, weights have an afterburn effect too, but just nothing compared to, you know, like uh, interval training or heavy deadlifts or heavy squats, for example. So as it gets closer to a competition, I do start doing cardio. And usually I only prepare for a bodybuilding competition for two weeks or less. And that first week is a ton of cardio. And I can get away with it because I hadn't been doing cardio before. My body's very inefficient at doing cardio, so it has to burn more calories and more fat for me to be able to actually do the cardio. And I, and I haven't been doing cardio for a long time to where I'm going to burn out on the cardio, either psychologically or physically. And then, of course, I back, up, back off on the cardio as it gets closer to the days up into a competition. So now for this competition, I mean, it's totally different because we're months out 
well, we're only five weeks out from the competition, and uh, we don't even know for sure if it's going to go forward as we, as we discussed. And I am going to only have access to home exercise, home workouts, so I'm not going to be able to do a normal contest prep. Now, I have not started dieting. I'm still trying to train the Thai girlfriend on how to cook um, bodybuilder style for competition, and she's just not getting it. And I, and I, I'd hate to break her heart because she loves cooking for me so much. Like you can see her in the background actually right there. She's cooking all the time. And so like I, I as far as quality of life, I don't want to sacrifice her happiness and my happiness of, for her cooking for me. So I'm going to have to find another way to do, uh, to burn more calories. And I just got this bicycle, that bicycle thing over there. Oh yeah. yeah. And that that's going to allow me to do morning cardio easier because as it is right now, I've been just, basically walking up the hill <laughs> mostly for the last yeah. for only three times so far in the last two weeks so i haven't even really started cardio uh and then as far as becoming superhuman with cardio being superhuman with cardio doesn't help when you're i've seen athletes preparing for bodybuilding competitions who get so good at doing cardio that they're not even burning that many calories of fat their body's so efficient that they do more and more cardio and they and they just get flatter and fat flatter and they're not actually losing the fat it's the yeah. chemistry the, the the last bit of stubborn body fat it's it's all chemistry and you can activate those pathways through diet lifestyle supplementation or drugs and what i'm really good at um and the reason I'm good at it is because I like shortcuts. And that's how I'm able to do so much in my life is by taking shortcuts, exploiting shortcuts, um, which is not cheating, which is winning at life. And, and, and most people who win at life take shortcuts yeah, to get yeah, there yeah. because life is too short to get anywhere unless you're taking shortcuts. So the drugs are a shortcut to activate some of these pathways that would otherwise take a tremendously time-consuming lifestyle of diet and training and i just don't want my life to revolve around diet and training i mean i like it i like the discipline as it gets close up to a show but i'm not afraid to admit that i will use the chemistry to activate those same pathways so i might for a bodybuilding competition to become superhuman i'm i'm going to use things like yohimbine and cartering and growth hormone like if i had to pick three things that act activate three different pathways um, and a beta and a beta agonist, so like a, a caffeine or a salbutamol, uh, or albuterol, same thing, or a clenbuterol type thing. So those are four fat loss pathways, and I will hit all of those four pathways with with drugs and, and the estrogen pathway and the insulin pathway. So so I think of it in like pathways, and if I want to burn fat really fast, I'm addressing each one of these pathways at the same time. And I think the criticism of that would be. Well, he's just taking a ton of drugs. No, I'm actually taking a very small amount of drugs, activating each pathway um, in much a similar way that you could do through diet, training, and lifestyle if your entire life revolved around it. So I'm shortcutting having to put that energy and time in by just going directly to the chemical pathway and activating it with a very low dosage of a drug that works synergistically together. Yeah, definitely. All right, that was enough to clarify, man. Totally get it. Okay, so those were really the five misconceptions I was really raising my eyebrows for. So is there, like, anything you'd like to say to Greg? Um, man, he's looking super shredded on Instagram. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. He also stays really shredded all year. I have to say, um, Greg and I are alike in a lot of ways in that he likes to experiment and he likes to teach. And he's able to maintain an awesome physique all year round. I would just, uh, I would just remind him and, and the public that I am not a career bodybuilder. I am more of what you would call like a biohacker across, across many different elements of life, not just bodybuilding. It's just bodybuilding is the sexiest part of it and uh, is, is kind of like the most fun. I guess, um, and, and what people are most interested in. But this same way of thinking of using chemistry and manipulating the body, epigenetics, whatever you want to call it, to create an enhanced self and an enhanced quality of life is what I'm all about. And if you remember that context, then what I say makes a lot more sense. You take it out of context, then what I say, you know, 
people can't really follow or understand what it's supposed to all mean. So sometimes it's important, you know, even for Greg to maybe watch a little bit more of my content uh, and the public to watch more of my content so they understand the context of where it's coming from. All right, so Greg, start watching Tony's videos, man. <laughs> All right, man, that was it for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching again. If you guys liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe and follow me and Tony Huge on Instagram. And that was it for today's video. Like I said, man, I am out. Ah.